call from a good friend of mine down in Tampa, Florida, uh, John Williams, and I know you've heard me talk about him before on, my, on some of my other videos. Uh, thank the world of him. Uh, very accomplished wood turner. But he uh, he also has a YouTube channel and uh, has several videos up from some different projects. Pretty neat stuff if you uh, get a chance to uh, check out his channel. But he contacted me and he's working on a project for uh, a client down in Florida and he's wanting to make some coasters. And he's asked that I help him with it. So anyway, we're, uh, we're gonna do a little collaborative video here and just see how things turn out. So uh, right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you to John and I'll see you when it's my turn to do some work. All right, I'm gonna be working on these other projects. here with Urban Wood Creations. Welcome to my uh, dining room today. Good to see you and uh, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to show you a project I got going on. A friend of mine, a landowner, got a big ranch and uh, he was building a new office in his uh, stable actually and needed some uh, desk accessories to go along so I uh, talked about it and decided he needed a, an inbox and uh, also a desk pad, which I ended up doing a nice uh, book match on a piece of wood and uh, something to hold his business cards. I'll fit down in that slot and a pen, uh, pen holder. And then the, the main subject today uh, are these coasters, which uh, I've got talking about. If you can see the uh, 2R on there. That's their brand and I uh, thought that'd be really neat to have it in there. And Steve Ogle had just uh, acquired a very nice CNC router and I got in touch with him to see uh, if he could do that for me and then I was just going to fill it with brass and uh, epoxy, brass shavings and epoxy, sand it down so you get a little, little bit of glitter and uh, Stephen was very cooperative. He told me if I'd take my wife to a nice dinner, he'd do it for me. So I sent the blanks up to him and uh, the rest is history. He did a great job on these and we'll take a little look and see how, uh, how all of this came together, this uh, two shop team project. Getting in about three eighths of an inch or so. And then once I get that done, I'll bring this around and I've got a, this little tool, it's an old craftsman really, uh, tool that I kind of ground off just for this purpose. I uh, kind of ground it this way in case I still had a center point in or anything, but anyway, then just take this. And I've got the, the tenon ready to go. Got them all turned, ready to go, boxed up, heading for Rockmont, Georgia. Thank you, Stephen. He's wanting to take these coasters that he sent, that he mailed up here to me. He's already cut a recess on it with his uh, lathe, and he wants me to put this design in it. You know, it's a fairly simple design, but. Uh, but it, it's uh, apparently it's a brand and I'm gonna try to help John out and uh, John said well you know how much will you charge me to do that and I said I said hey take take your wife out to a nice restaurant <laughs> so uh, so that's uh, that's what he's he's gonna do he's got to take his wife out to a nice restaurant she's a very very nice classy lady and uh, she came up to visit when he did one time in my shop and she's just a pleasure to be around but uh i hope you i hope you take her out to a good one john because i'm not cheap <laughs> all right uh but he wanted me to try to use my x carve and do a video with it uh he's got his youtube channel and uh and he's kind of wanting to do this as a 
collaboration type thing. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going to help him out. And uh, we're going to get started right now with it. I've already got the x carve set up. And I've got a piece of MDF in there I'm going to cut first just to make sure that I'm not going to mess up his coasters. All right, well, let's get started. All right. Okay, well, I just scanned the logo and uh, brought it into Inkscape and created a vector graphic out of it. Then I could import it into Easel. So that's where I'm at now. And what I've done is I've I've drawn a circle to represent the coaster, which is uh, 4 and 1 16th diameter. And then I've, I've centered it in the middle of the, uh, well, I've got it set in the bottom left corner of the easel. And then I centered the 2R, or the logo, in the middle of the circle. And this should represent where everything is going to be carved at. But my first carbon is going to be on MDF, which is over here, and I already have it clamped down. And I'm going to do my first carbon here just to make sure everything is cutting right exactly where I want it to. Okay, the idea here is that I'm going to cut an indention the exact same size as the coaster. And then I'm going to be able to set each coaster in here, and that way I keep the same center point all the time for each one. <clears throat> and I just keep repeating the process, cutting out the logo. But I'm also, on my test cut, first of all, is I'm going to cut the logo a little bit deeper so that I know, you know, I can look at it and make sure that it's all centered. <clears throat> Pretty deep, John, <clears throat> but I think that's going to be just fine. That'll that'll hold your inlay really nice. All right, I'm going to get this one out, get the next one going, and I'll see y'all in a little while. All right, John. There they are, all eight of them. And these, I hope I can get down to the mailbox in time, or to the post office, get these things shipped back to you. I hope that's what you want. And remember, Kathy gets a nice, fancy restaurant because I'm not cheap. All right, John, here you go. They're on their way back to you. All right, package arrived from Mr. Ogle. It is an engraving. Hope y'all can see that. The 2R we were talking about, and I tell you, Stephen, that is just perfect, right smack in the center. Almost like you knew what you were doing. 
Now I asked them to make them about a quarter inch deep, but I just checked it and they're uh, 16 64ths, but I think I can work with that. Great job, Stephen. And uh, we'll get on with this. Now what I'm going to do, I've got my materials here, I'm going to mix up a solution of my clear uh, epoxy and some of the uh, brass shavings from the key supplier at Ace Hardware. Uh, long story, actually I get them from uh, Whitefish, Montana. My sister's boyfriend works in Ace Hardware there and he just empties them out and every month or so sends me a shipment of brass shavings. But anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. But anyway, Stephen did a great job on these. Now we're going to mix it up and fill these with uh, the brass mixture. So let me uh, get these kind of spread out. And uh, I tell you, these just look great. This is going to be a real hit with my, my customer, my client, whatever we're calling them these days. But uh, these just look great. So let me uh, kind of refocus here so we can, you can see what I'm doing and we'll go from there. All right, now, get my brass shavings out of here, and I've got no clue how much I need to mix in, but uh, I've got about another dozen things I can fill up. There we go. I mean, this is uh, no great magic, just kind of get it on there. back and forth action. A little extra, we'll put it over there. Because when I put this on the lathe, I'll be uh, sanding this down and so it uh, doesn't have to be perfect first time around. Uh, as long as it sinks down into the hole, I'll be in good shape. So that's about it. There they are. Uh, that uh, epoxy takes uh, probably an hour to start setting up and takes two, maybe three hours to really uh, harden. At least that's what it's uh, kind of typically been when I've been doing my travel mug. So we'll let that sit and uh, kind of cure overnight, get back tomorrow and start uh, shaving them up. Uh, so next morning in uh Epoxy hardened up real nice. <laughs> it kind of looks bad there. You can see a little indention. But this is what we're going to try to finish it up to. I went ahead and did one just to make sure it's going to work. Uh, going to get a little shape to it. And I think maybe you can see a little bit of the glitter from the uh, brass shavings. I think it's really going to, going to look nice. But anyway, it's, uh, it's coming along real well. And I'm uh, going to face one of these off and uh, Show you how we're going to do it. finished up with the uh, oh, well, probably at least 400 maybe 600 grit I was out of 600, I went to 400 and had to jump ship there, but I wanted to polish up that brass as much as I could. I got a piece of 1200 here, which uh, seems to be really doing the job. And uh, bringing that brass out. So that's uh, basically 
what I'm all about. Oh yeah, yeah, you can see that stuff shimmer, I think. But uh, that's basically it. So I'm gonna be shaping. I got to what, six, seven more to do. And be shaping them and uh, get them down to that, that sheen. And uh, I think when you get the epoxy on there, it is really gonna pop out and be a pretty neat looking coaster. Well, I've got one more little step. Here I forgot about uh, I'm stain these and uh, basically just using Minwax uh, English chestnut and uh, this should give them a little bit of color and uh, blend in. That's what they stained the rest of the room with. So the only thing I'm worried about is uh, it's going to end up hiding the uh, shiny. We'll put this on and then we'll come back and rub it off later and uh, see what we got. But uh, I think the color actually should bring it out. You have to do a little bit of buffing and such, but what I got to do is uh, get this on. This obviously will dry overnight at least. Okay, getting down to the last phase. Uh, you saw me stain them, and uh, I just sprayed them with a little shellac. The shellac kind of seals them up as they get ready to get the epoxy coating. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of take some uh, rough steel wool and uh, smooth it out a little bit, but still leave it rough enough for the epoxy to get a bite. So it's not uh, no rocket science here. Just uh, spin them a little bit. And that's it. Blow it off and then we'll mount them on the, uh, the rotator. End piece just fit into my uh, mortise. So I'm just putting some double face tape on the end and uh, just mount them right up. And that's all it takes. So we'll get, uh, get the rest of them mounted up sand it up and get them on here and uh, we'll be back to do some uh, epoxy coating. And uh, we just start applying it while it's rotating. And uh, as I said, this stuff takes a uh, pretty good while to harden up. Okay, we got it all mixed up. And pretty basic process, kind of the same thing I do with the uh, travel mug. Just start applying it. And uh, as I say that uh, Rotation is kind of the key. It allows it to kind of seek its own level and level up, end up with a really nice finish. I discovered something the last set of travel mugs, though. Uh, I've been doing that shellac, and I thought, man, yeah, maybe the smoother the uh, base coat, the better. Well, not so much. Uh, apparently, I got it too slick, and. Uh, Epoxy didn't want to stick in some places, so anyway, got to do them over. But, uh, so be it. Perfect. Perfect. cleaned off the back of that nicely, sanded a little bit, and uh, we'll be good to go. Right, now that I got the uh, backs all cleaned up, uh, just gluing in these uh, little discs, it'll make it a nice solid surface for the cork. So now I just got to let those dry. But, uh, fillers in and just uh, using my sanding board. Perfect. Got them all nice and 
sand it down. So just continue on with this and uh, we'll be back for the, uh, what's next? 156, yes, the uh, cork bottom. Wow, John, those really look good. You did an awesome job on that. And uh, I'm glad I could be part of it. <clears throat> All that awesome stuff looks really good. Very nice job, John. Uh, thanks for letting me help you out with it. I uh, hope you all enjoyed watching it. Uh, this was a very fun collaboration between me and Old John. And uh, you guys have a good day. See you on down the road.